Hey guys, it's Jen from I Create Crafts. In today's tutorial, I'm going to show you how to create these wood round door signs. They were so simple to make. I created a stencil that I applied to the wood round sign and I painted over the stencil. The final product turned out so amazing and I have many tips and tricks for you in this video. I can't wait to show you how to create these door hangers, so let's get started. Okay guys, so as I'm sitting here thinking on what I can do for my next video, I'm thinking of doing something with chickens. We have chickens here, it's winter time, it's negative 10 or 15 degrees outside right now. I'm thinking of summer <laughs> and I've been doing a lot of wood signs and I was thinking, what can I do with my next wood sign? And I'm like, chickens. Where I sell, a lot of people are, live in the country or they come from the city and they wanna get kind of different things. I've actually never seen a wood sign that normally goes on your door um, outside by like a chicken coop or even on your door. So I was actually going to turn these ones into some towels as it's listed here, farm towels. Um, I was going to make some of these towels with these sayings on it, but I'm like, I want to do something with a wood sign. So um, the ones that I'm really thinking of are like this one, welcome to our farmhouse, beware of the chickens and this farm fresh one. I like these other ones. I found these on design bundles. Um, I'll leave the link below if I can find where I got them from, uh, the exact link. But I just wanted to show you guys this. I thought it was really funny. So I'm actually going to get rid of uh, a few of these. So I'm just going to X out of these so I don't have to worry about getting these cut out or anything. I just wanted to show you a few of them that um, I had been working on. Oh my gosh, I might actually end up doing all three of these. Um, I bought some really thin uh, pieces of wood, round wood from Amazon. And it's really, I'm like holding it right now. It's very flimsy. It's nothing really to it. Uh, I know that if I put it on the door, it'll kind of like fly around. So I was thinking putting something like this on my chicken coop or around my chicken coop. Um, but I'm actually thinking I'm going to do all three of these, actually, to tell you the truth. So... Um, I think for this first one here, Beware of the Chickens, um, I'm going to actually move this over a little bit more and just work with this one. I need to figure out the actual size of my um, wood that I have here, um, but I think once I figure that size out, which I should have done before, but I was kind of excited to do this, I'm actually going to pull, I'm going to detach it and pull this down a little bit more because I think I'm going to paint it maybe red and white or black and white, something like that. I really haven't thought about it too much, but I wanna bring this down and have it like a different color. So I'm gonna actually look up my size of this really quick and I will be right back. All right, so I wanted to show you guys this really quick where I bought it from. So it's $14 for tw or, um, eight of them, um, which really isn't too bad. I think it was cheaper when I bought it. I actually bought it twice already. I don't remember buying it twice, but I bought them for to make signs out of. So this is what I bought. Uh, I'll leave the link to this below. Um, but like I said, they're very thin. They're not the thick ones that you buy like at Menards or anywhere. They are the thicker, the thinner ones here. Let's see, maybe this will show it. See, it's, it's much thinner, but I wanted to show you where I got it from. So it says it's 12 inch wood. So I'm actually gonna go back to Zion Space. I'm gonna close this one. And I'm gonna actually gonna grab a circle here and I'm gonna change it to be a 12 inch circle. And I'll tell you why in just a minute. So I just changed it up here to 12. And then if you don't unlock it, it'll change it to by uh, 12 by 12. So here's where this comes in. So obviously, you don't see your design because it's um, in back of it. So with the design already selected, I'm going to go to arrange and then send to front. And here it is here. So I'm going to pull this over a little bit more so we can see just this. So I'm going to make this a little bit larger. And I'll let you know what I had in mind with the colors. And I'm sorry, I don't know. I think I'm getting a little sick right now. I'm a little stuffy. So excuse my voice. Um, so what I was saying with this one, so this is the actual size of my... Uh, wood that I'm going to be using, but I wanted to do it two different colors. So I was thinking about bringing the chickens down a little bit further. So to do that, I need to go to the detach button and let's see. Okay. So it does individually bring them together. So I'm actually going to move this out of the way for a minute and grab 
all of this and I'm going to right away attach it because as you saw it, were, it was individual so I'm going to bring it down a little bit and I'm going to go ahead and attach this too because the same thing would happen it would be it would cut out each little piece so now that I have them individually I can actually bring this down a little bit further take this up a little bit higher I can make it smaller if I want because I want to try to get it up higher and get as much out as of it as I can and there so I think instead of making the sign all one color I may actually do several different colors um I haven't really thought about it much it is kind of neat the way it is but I really like how this looks I like the size so this one is done so the last thing I'm going to do is just keep my circle because it's the same size and I'm going to move this up a little bit so that we can work on the next one so it's going to be the same thing but I think I'm going to do this farm fresh egg one. So again, it's behind it. So you gotta just rearrange it. So you arrange and then send to front and here it is. I'm gonna unlock it and I'm gonna make it larger. So again, the circle is just to visualize it to see what it would actually look like because this is the size of my board I'm using. And you know what? I really like it the way it looks now. Um, I like using stain and, and then for the back and then I like painting this part. So I think I'm actually going to change the red to like a grayish color because I really like this gray stain that I use. And um, I can either use, I kind of like the black or I can do it white. But again, it's up to you whatever colors you want to do it. I'm actually going to stretch this out a little bit more and try to get more off of my sign. And I don't have to center it or do anything because all I'm using is this print here and then I'll do the same thing. I'll reverse weed it because I don't want um, to have vinyl outside. It, even though you use 651, the permanent vinyl, it could eventually peel off. So I love painting things instead. So I really like the way this looks. I love how it's like, you know curved with the sign itself. So you can always play around with it when you put it on. Um, but yeah, I really like this. I think I'm just gonna bring it down a little bit more. I don't wanna stretch it too much, if you know what I mean. I don't wanna stretch the eggs in too far, but I'm trying to get the most out of it that I can. So, wow, I really like that. I like it the way it is. I think this is actually how I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna have the gray stain on the back and then I'm gonna paint it this black color. So I'm actually gonna attach this. All I have is the words here now. So I'm gonna attach that so it will cut out all as one piece. So as you can see, it, it darkened the gray here. So everything is gonna cut out just like that. So I don't need this circle anymore so I can get rid of that. I'll shrink my screen a little bit and we can see what we're all working with here. So these two pieces are attached to each other so I don't have to worry about these. But if I were to move this, I'll move it just to show you, it's individual so they're two different pieces so i'm actually going to go back here and i'm going to select both of them and then i can bring it down and show you guys what it looks like but for me to cut it out all the same i'm going to just change the color to this to uh this black and i'm going to change this to black because it doesn't matter what color this is because i'm going to be reverse weeding all of these i just want to be able to cut it out on one piece of um vinyl okay so the last thing i want to do is actually attach both of these together um, as you can see it says detach here but that's because we attached um these this whole piece together and this piece together but i actually want all of them together so i'm going to push the detach button i'm going to go ahead and grab it all again and then i'm going to attach it so now it's one piece rather than two different pieces so i like the sizing of it so if i bring my screen back you guys can see how big it is and you can go in and you can put the layer here if you want um, but it just makes it easier to see on the sign one other trick really quick that i actually might do um to lay this on the um wood board itself rather than trying to visualize to see where it is i think i'm actually going to bring that shape back the circle and change it to be the 12 by 12 so i'm not unlocking it up at the top i'm just going to do 12 and it's going to automatically change it to 12. so i think for vis for me to be able to see where it is rather than kind of guess where to put this so here i'm going to move this to forward to show you again i think actually I'm going to do it the easy way. Um, this way does, you will lose a little bit of vinyl, but I'm okay with it because it's 631 that I'm using. It's not the permanent kind and it's a little bit cheaper. So I think I'm actually going to cut it out as it looks because then 
I don't have to guesstimate where to put it to get the center. So I'm going to select both of these. So I have the words and the circle. I'm going to go up to the align button and I'm going to center it. So that's completely in the center. So now I'm going to go ahead and select both of them again and push attach. So it's going to cut out as one piece. And again, this is up to you if you want to do it this way. Um, it's just easier for me to be able to get it in the center directly rather than trying to guess where it is. So if you wanna do that, you can do that. If you don't, you can just cut it out the way it is and put it on your thing, um, on your sign. But this is the way I'm gonna do it. So I'm gonna do shape, grab a circle, and then change it up here to be 12 by 12. And then do the same thing. Again, it's gonna be behind it. So we're just gonna go to the arrange button, send to front, and here it is. So I'm kind of putting it where I think the middle would be. I'll select both of them go to align and then center it and there it is so I think it's just so much easier that way rather than trying to figure it out yourself so then there's just the last one do the same thing circle change the size to be 12 by 12 or whatever size your um wood is so again don't be alarmed it's still there send to front get as close as I can to where I want it to be and then go ahead and select both of them align and then center it last thing to do is just attach it so here it is here are the three that i'm going to be doing um so again i'm going to be using 631 not the permanent vinyl and then i'm going to reverse weed this so instead of peeling back the vinyl like we normally would and leave the words there we're going to do just the opposite i'm going to pull out the words and leave everything else there so while this is going um but I see right here that I forgot. Cricut does not like the 12 by 12. So I have to reduce these to be 11 and a half by 11 and a half. So when I put this on my sign, it's gonna have a little bit of a half an inch on all the side around here. So you're gonna have to go back and change this. So unfortunately, 11.5, and then it'll change it for me. So I gotta do that with each of these, unfortunately. I wish I could have it because I'm going to have that half an inch there, but whoops, I don't want to unlock it because then I'll change the other one directly for me. There. So for those of you who stuck with me through this, thank you. I really appreciate it. I do my best to show you directly how to do this and how to make things better. Um, so I really hope you guys are liking this video. Please subscribe if you haven't already and give me a thumbs up. Let me know how I'm doing with this. Do you guys like this? Honestly, I've never seen these done before, but I haven't done a lot of research though. So there might be some out there like that, but I was just doing welcome ones and I'm like, you know, I live in the country. I have a little farm here. This would be really cute. So that's why I decided to do these. So again, I'm just going to go to the make it button. And this is what it's going to look like. So again, I'm cutting out the whole thing. You don't have to do this. You are going to lose a little bit of vinyl if you do it this right way rather than just cutting out the words. But I'm okay with that because I would rather be able to put it on the board and have it centered directly for me rather than me getting the ruler out, trying to figure out where the center is, making sure everything's completely in the center. So I'm going to cut this out in 631. I will weed it out and then I'll show you the next step. Um, the next step is actually painting or staining your board. But I I like to let this cut out while I'm doing the other parts so it dries and then by the time this is done I can come in here and weed it and then by the time I'm done weeding this my boards will be dry so that's just the process of how I do it so I'm gonna go ahead and finish this up and then I'll show you the next step okay so I actually finished cutting these out and I weeded them I kind of just did it all at once rather than waiting so I have these two done and I'm waiting for the last one to finish but I figure I'll show you guys so this is the wood I'm going to be using. Like I said, it's very flimsy. It's not very thick. Uh, so I wouldn't recommend using these as like the door ones, but I thought this would be kind of cute to hang some of these um, on my chicken coop even. So starting with this one, beware of the chickens. I was going to do a line here initially, um, but I'm thinking I'm just going to leave that alone. I'm actually going to make the whole sign white and then uh, do the beware of chickens in red and then do the chickens and then they can be real peckers black so we're gonna see how that turns out and then as far as this other one here i think i'm gonna do it the way it looks just make the whole thing black and then do um, the white for the parts that are cut out so it's gonna look exactly like this so the first thing you're gonna want to do is take um, one of your signs. These are really nicely already uh, sanded for you, so you don't have to do anything. But I did want to show you one thing. I have a few of these. Um, I don't know if I can find which one it was. This one. That 
are not in the greatest condition. As you can see, there's a big line here, and then there's one here as well, so it's already cracking. So go, sh go through your package and make sure you have um, enough good ones, otherwise I would send it back. But I have these two really good ones, and I'm gonna try to go with the grain on these. So you just wanna pick which way the grain's going, and then that's the way I like to paint. So I have my spot set up already, and I have my paint already cho chosen. So I really like to use like Wavery chalk or the chalk paint, um, so that's what I'm going to be using. So this is just a regular red color, it's called Crimson, and then I have this chalk paint, it's called Linen White, and then I have this Rust-Oleum Milk paint, which is black. So these are going to be my three that I'm going to be using, and then I'm also using some sponge brushes here, or makeup sponges I guess you want to call them and I like to do it just to dab on it and it works really well and then just to cover the whole thing I use a sponge brush oh my goodness a sponge brush if I can talk um, but this one's a little bit smaller I picked this up at the dollar store so it's gonna take me a little bit longer to do it but I just wanted to show you the supplies that I use so I have all that and then to finish it I'm going to be using this Mod Podge um, it's going to act like a sealer for the paint on here when it's finished because I'm not using vinyl it's going to be all painted so the next thing you're gonna to want to do is take whichever actually the first thing you want to do is paint this so you just want to make sure there's no debris or anything on here which there isn't and then take whatever color you're going to do I'm gonna do this uh, base color first which is going to be black and then I'm gonna paint over it uh, white after I put my stencil on so I'm just gonna give this a really good shake and then I'll open it up and show you guys what it looks like I love this stuff so it's this really pretty chalky creamy color so I'm gonna be using that and I like to do these a couple at a time just because it takes a little bit longer to dry but actually chalk paint dries a lot quicker than your regular paint that you use and then depending on how many coats you want to put on like how thick you want it to look if you want to have like a little color behind it or if you want it just to be fully you know black it's up to you however you want to do it but I'm gonna do the front side I'm gonna let it dry I'm gonna do the sides all around and then I think I'm gonna do another coat after this I want it to be nice and thick so I'm gonna finish this one up I'm gonna work on the next one after this which is just taking another one of these and then putting and using this and like I said I want the background to be white so I'm gonna do the same thing and paint the background white. So I'm just gonna fast forward this part. You don't have to watch this. Once it dries, I'll show you the next step. Okay, so my board is completely dry, both of them. So here's the black one. They did both sides and the edges. And then here is the white one that I have done as well. So I'm gonna work with the black one. So I'm going to be using this one. So I was gonna do black and white. So the vinyl is here and I just used the 650, 631 if you remember. And now I'm just taking some transfer tape this is just the clear transfer tape. You can buy this off of Amazon for a big, huge roll, or you can get it at the dollar store. They're both exactly the same. I tend to buy, buy the bigger one at um, on Amazon. So I just peel it, just the top part, to get it started. And then I'm going to lay it down on the vinyl. Just start at the top. Basically, you just want to make sure that you don't get any bubbles or anything in it. So I'm just going to pull this bottom part and work with my hand here and just I'm pushing it as I go. So when I pull it on the bottom, I'll just use my hand and flatten it, making sure I don't get any bubbles in it. I will take my squeegee. Which, here it is. I'll use my little squeegee and then I'll just push it to get all of the air bubbles out first. Just want to make sure you take all your bubbles out that you can on here before you start peeling it back. So I always flip my designs upside down and I work backwards. So then I can see if something's coming up off of my paper. But if you do a good job scraping it, you shouldn't have anything come up. Perfect. So here it is. Here's my board. Kind of hard to see on the black surface here with the black transfer tape. But like I said, I made the circle the same size of my um, board, but because I can only do 11 and a half by 11 and a half and my board is 12, it's going to be like a half inch off on each side. So I'm just going to carefully lay it down. And I'm sorry, it is black on black, so it's hard to see. But I'm just going to go around the edges and give it a little half inch all the way around. 
So I think that's pretty good. But you just want to take your time. You can kind of see up here where it's just a little bit around the whole edge. And it's okay if it's off just a little because I'm just going to be painting this anyway. This vinyl's not going to stay on. So I'm just going to use my hands, push really hard to make sure I don't get any bubbles in again, and then use my scraper one more time and scrape really well to make sure that the vinyl sticks. And this is very important because you don't want your paint to seep through. So I'm just going to scrape it really hard. And then I'll peel back my transfer tape. And it should all come off clean with no black spots of the vinyl that you have down. And if you have any bubbles peeling up already, just use your fingers and kind of press it down as you go because you don't want any bubbles or any pieces of your vinyl sticking up. Okay, perfect. Again, I'm sorry it's black on black. I'll show you with my next one what I mean. Um, but as you can see, it's on really nice. Um, there are a few bubbles on the edges here. I don't care about that. I only care about the parts where you see the paint coming through um, because that's where you're gonna be painting. So I'll show you with the next one. So I'm gonna do the same thing. I have this other one done here and I'm using the same transfer tape that I just used because I like to um, reuse things. So I'm just gonna start at the top and kind of do the same thing as I just did but it's a little bit more difficult because I don't have that bottom piece on here so I'm just gonna pull it and then just do the same thing work with your hands pushing down as you go so you get the air bubbles out but there and just the same process go really well so your vinyl will stick to your transfer tape when you peel it up And then this one will be easier to see because it is the white paint. So again, I'm just taking it and gently putting it on. I'm not pushing it because I want to make sure that all edges have the same amount around the whole side. Unfortunately, like I said, it wouldn't let me cut it any larger. So we'll just take our time and do it properly. You want to do your base color um, on top of your stencils. So I'm just using a makeup, little makeup foam brush and I'm just gonna dip it into my can. And then you see there's a lot on it. So I like to just take it and dab onto a paper towel and then kind of go over it. So I'm just doing a light coat up and down motions. I'm not putting a lot of paint on it because you don't want anything really to seep under. And this is why we do the base color. So your next color paint will not seep under and then this will also seal it for you. So I'm just taking it and dabbing it up and down. So I'm gonna finish this up quick. I'll do the other one black, and then once it dries, I'll show you the next step. Okay, so this, this first one is completely dry um, after the second coat of putting the color on. I put the base color on. I only did it once, but I just did the up and down dabbing. Um, so now I'm going to go in and do the white, and it's going to be the same process. Uh, nice light taps and a little bit onto a paper towel. Especially this part, you do not want a lot of paint to go in because you do not want it to seep in. So I'm just gonna do the same thing. This one's just gonna be all of it's just gonna be white. So I'm just gonna do the same thing, just up and down dabbing making sure that I get everywhere. And you just want to make sure that your your last coat that you did was completely dry before you even do this. So this is basically it. I'm going to do, well, maybe two or three coats because I don't want to see any of the black behind it, but I don't want to do a lot of paint. I want to do just a little bit and then just up and down dabbing motions because the more paint you put on, the more risk you have of it bleeding through. All right, so here's the other one that I was working on. This one is completely dry too. This was the Beware of the Chickens. So this top part, the Beware part, I was gonna do red, and then the bottom part here, I was gonna do black. So it's just the same process. You're gonna wanna take a clean sponge brush or makeup uh, sponge and just do the same process. So anyway, so I'm just gonna finish this one up, do the same thing. So the top part here is going to be red and then the bottom is going to be black. All right, so they are both dry to the touch. Now the thing is to do is to peel it back. So here is the moment of truth. 
And because I'm using 631 instead of 651, it should not peel up the background color. But because we did the extra layer of the background color, we should have nice, clean lines. So now I just got to go in with my weeder and pick out the rest of the pieces, but I'm really happy with the way that this looks. Okay, so I finished this one. I actually did get another weeder. I have this, whoops, no, this one instead, so this one worked a lot better. But as you can see, I have really, really nice crisp lines. I didn't have any issue with bleeding or anything, so I'm really happy at how this turned out. I did make a mistake. I told you guys before I misplaced that piece, so I might go in with like a little marker or something and make the A. Um, but I really love how this turned out. I'm going to be doing the next one. This other one that has the red and the black and it's going to be the same process. Okay, so I am finished with this. It did turn out really well. This one I am not so happy with. I think I let it dry way too much um, before peeling off the uh, vinyl. Um, but I normally do let it dry. Uh, you can see some of the pieces. It's not that it leaked underneath or blood. It's that my weeder kept getting the edges of things. So this one didn't work out too well, but I'm always honest with you guys if I make a mistake or whatnot, so maybe not let it sit as long as I did. This black one I absolutely love. I love how this turned out. So the last part for me to do um, is spray this with some poly uh, or some Mod Podge. I like to spray this because, especially because I used chalk paint and any kind of water or anything will smudge it and make the paint come off. So I use the Mod Podge to give it like a, a sheen look to it, nice clear um cover to it so it's an, it's a sealer that I would highly recommend using so I'm going to do both of these outside and then the other thing I'm going to do is clean up the back a little bit I have a little bit of this uh, vinyl stuck to it which is okay um, and then I'm just going to put uh, two pieces of or actually one piece of ribbon on it just like one here and one here and then make a loop so it can hang this is so thin that there's no way I can put a screw or anything into it so I'm either going to use some hot glue or even a stapler and just put a little a ribbon on it so I can hang it up so I'm gonna finish that up but then I'll show you the finished product when I have it all done and hanging up but I'm really excited how these turned out um, I definitely like this black one a lot better Oh my gosh, guys, I love how these turned out. I really do like the black one better, but I can't believe how easy these were to create. I'm really happy how crisp the lines are and that there was no bleeding. I hope you go and create your own version and maybe try to sell these or even give them away as gifts or hang them up at home if you have a homestead or a small farm like me. Please make sure that you hit that subscribe button and that hit that bell icon as it will notify you when I have another fun craft. Happy crafting, everyone. Mm -hmm.